Hi, it's Mike from uh, Mystic Smokers, and I get a lot of questions from guys on the either the forums or the mysticsmokers.com website uh, about various build processes, how to, to build a collector, how to locate the doors or do the layout on the tank, how to do this, the uh, firebox, and I, I figured the best way to answer those questions all in one big swoop is to uh, go ahead and do a video on the build process for um, a, a smoker itself. This is a 250 gallon uh, LP tank. It should be a little over a quarter of an inch thick. So it's, it's your average uh, mid 60s. I think this was a 1967 tank. Uh, all of those in the, the late 50s, early 60s, uh, all the way up into the 70s in fact, are, are pretty good thick material. Um, and, and they're pretty good for building tanks. So this is a 250 gallon. And the first thing that we need to do is decide exactly what we're going to build. In this case, we're going to have a direct flow offset cooker. In other words, the firebox will be here, the collector and the stack on that end, uh, and it'll be a direct flow through. Uh, so to do our layout or to decide where we want to put our doors, we need to take about three things, uh, or generally three things into consideration. First is going to be, and most important, is this horizontal tank seam here. Uh, this seam right here is the enemy for doors that you want to seal good. Uh, when this tank was rolled and then ultimately welded, there's an awful lot of stress uh, in and around this area right here. So we want this seam to be as far from our doors as we can get it, preferably 180 degrees from the center of our doors is where over the years I have found I like to put these. And I'll try to put a, uh, um, a steel shot up a little bit later to kind of show you may or may not be able to see it that this tank is not actually round right here. When they roll it and it goes through the rolling machine, uh, it doesn't finish rolling the last few inches of the piece of sheet metal that this tank is rolled out of. All it is is a big square piece of sheet metal. Uh, and this piece right here, if you can see, it has a nice radius here, nice radius there, but here it kind of flattens out a little bit, uh, just where it didn't make it through the roller all the way. And then they had a big machine that clamped it shut, and they used uh, a machine to weld this weld here. So that area is not only got some stress induced from the, uh, the weld itself, the heating and cooling, uh, it's also got some tension in there where uh, that machine, the clamp, pulled it together. So we want to stay as far away from we can as, as that. Uh, these wells, these small wells here won't cause a problem for us. The next area uh, that we want to stay away from is these bung holes. Uh, I'm fortunate in this case that there are only three of them to deal with. Uh, I'll just knock all that stuff off and grind it smooth. Uh, but this one particularly has a very large weld right there that could cause a problem for us if we get a corner of a door too close to it. It'll want to peel that door um, up this way a little bit uh, because the weld is on this side. When the weld shrank, it, it, it wants to, to move the metal in that direction. So we'll just keep that in mind. We'll try to keep those as far away from the door as we can as well. But it's going to be a compromise between that horizontal seam and these wells here. Uh, a lot of guys will put these bung holes on the bottom and utilize those as a drain as well. Put a plug in them and, and use one as a drain. Uh, you can do that, uh, in my opinion, if it works out with your weld seam. Um, but oftentimes that puts your seam in a bad position uh, and, and that can open you up for some door flex when you finally open these doors up. So. What I do, uh, and it makes it a more refined uh, system in the long run anyway. It's a lot more work, but uh, in, in my opinion, it's, it's worth the trouble. It looks better, uh, and it actually works better. If uh, you use these as a drain, as a drain uh, or if you put them down on the bottom uh, with a plug in there, they're going to fill with grease and, and little meat chunks and all of that, and ultimately that stuff is going to go rancid and cause all kinds of problems. Uh, I like to have a nice smooth bottom that I can power wash out uh, when I'm done with the cook and just be done with it. So uh, what we will do is cut these out uh, with an angle grinder and a nice, nice 
square or rectangular hole, whatever it turns out to be there. These, these are all going to be square holes. And we will make a patch out of uh, uh, flat bar, two, uh, two inch by a quarter inch flat bar. We'll roll it on the roller to get it to the exact radius as this, put the patch in there, and then weld it around, grind it smooth, sand it, and we'll never even know that, that these holes were there. So the third factor that we want to, uh, and this one's way down on, on the list, but still, in my opinion, it's, it's pretty important, is uh, any uh, pitting that a tank may have. You know, almost all tanks, uh, particularly these older tanks, and this one's in pretty good shape, will have some pitting in this lower area down here. Uh, two reasons for that. One, you get grass and, and everything else that uh, will hold moisture down here and, you know, whatever chemicals may be in the yard can, can you know, fertilizer and that sort of stuff bounce up on it down here. Uh, and uh, probably more importantly is this is where the liquid line is usually in this tank. Um, not, not to say that they, it won't fill uh, up much higher, certainly they do, uh, but most of the time they spend their time right around in here and that's where the condensation is going to end up and, and cause us a lot more moisture on the outside of that tank and, and obviously then you would get some pitting. So this tank, uh, there's a little bit of pitting, it's not bad and it looks like it's just limited right through here. Uh, so that's a good thing. And of course this tank has been sandblasted. I sandblast all of my tanks uh, inside and out. Uh, and just this past year I have started sandblasting them before I do the build and it just makes a lot safer build. Uh, honestly, if you haven't seen my video on uh, lead-based paints and all, um, probably a good idea to go watch that. It's something to consider. Um, so it's a, it's a safer build for me to have these sandblasted professionally, and then I can work with them, and I know that I'm just dealing with uh, bare metal. Of course, it, then it's not sandblasted on the inside, so I will uh, either sandblast the inside of it myself or probably run it back up there um, to the guy that does it. Uh, and have it sandblasted, the whole thing sandblasted again before I paint and ultimately sell this one. Uh, so every one of my tanks uh, or systems are sandblasted inside and out. So uh, you're starting with the, the cleanest product that, that we can get. Uh, so uh, taking into account our bung holes, taking into account our horizontal seam and the uh, uh, whatever pity we may have, the First thing that we need to do is find out where that seam is and put a little mark. Let's roll around. And we'll put a mark on the end of the tank here so I can see where that seam is. Just a temporary little mark uh, right here. And see what this area here looks like. I, I really like this area for doors. And I will roll that seam to right now it's it's down on the bottom here and I like this area of the tank for doors. Uh, I don't have any pitting. The pitting is down here. My feet are down here. I go, of course we'll cut those off. Um, so that will be below the table line. Any pitting is going to be below the table line and our bung holes are well back behind the door top there and in this case we're going to bring our door opening uh, two inches down from 12 o'clock. We'll, we'll go through that later. So that even gets us another two inches away from those bung holes. So I kind of like that area right there. Uh, yeah that looks that looks pretty good. We could even go here and put our 12 o'clock right there. I like that. And then our nine o'clock will be right there which will be obviously the bottom of our door opening so i can't see any reason not to put um not to put that there so i'm going to put a mark here that that designates 12 o'clock and write a 12 beside it so now what we need to do is get us a straight line that goes directly across that 12 o'clock so, in other words, we want to put a reference line across here that all of our other marks on this tank are going to work off of. And I have found over the years that the, the best way to do that is with a laser marker. 
these things are so cheap nowadays. Uh, even my old one here is, uh, you know, manual leveling, so I have to manual level it. The, uh, the newer ones are self-leveling, and gosh, they're, you know, 150 bucks or something like that. So if you're building your own cooker, uh, I would recommend um, getting, you know, maybe you can find one of the old ones cheaper at a pawn shop or something like that. But if you're going to be building cookers, uh, two or three or four or more, uh, then I would certainly invest in a self-leveling when I will eventually get one. Uh, this one's getting to the point where it's hard to turn on and off. I have to fidget with the switch. So anyway, uh, there are options out there for self-leveling. If not, you can manually level that rascal and, and not have a problem. So the first thing we need to do uh, before we draw this line is make sure that our tank is absolutely level. Uh, because we're going to level the machine and we need our target to be level. So when we're putting our level on top of the tank, stand behind it here and make sure that you are running perfectly straight. In other words, if it's cocked just a little bit, which that's exaggerated, uh, you won't show a correct level. Your level will be off. So just stand back here and eyeball it and make sure that you're shooting straight down the tank. And uh, I have a... Um, leveling system on my rotisserie. These jacks, uh, after we get this layout done, these jacks will come off and, and they won't be used again. So uh, a lot of guys won't have that. You can. I used to use uh, basically a hydraulic jack on one end or, or a uh, trailer jack crank on the end of my rotisserie. Many, many different ways to do that, but get your tank perfectly level. And looks like I need just a tiny bit on this end. And that looks perfect. That's perfect. Make sure that my tank, or at least my rotisserie is, that's correct. And that is correct. So uh, obviously this way isn't as important because we'll be turning this tank, but I want to have a reference uh, for later on when we're doing things uh, like putting the firebox on and the uh, collector itself. So now we have a baseline th in this direction uh, that we can always go back to and know exactly where this tank is right now. So let me get the machine turned on and we will extend this line across here. Okay, so I've turned half of the lights off in here and I think that we can see that on the camera. I know that the uh, uh, frame rate on the camera is gonna make it to where it looks kind of jumpy across here. Just know that for me, it's a pretty steady line. Uh, and that's just because the, the uh, machine is rotating so fast and it's coinciding with the frame rate. But anyway, I see a steady line across there. Um, so I'm gonna pull that down and it just moved. Um, my machine just reset itself to a different setting. Anyway, so I'm gonna pull down to match to our 12 o'clock line, and that is exactly where I want to be. So I'm just gonna put me some little dashes across here just so that I can easily extend that line all the way across with a straight edge. Um, I will take a, I'm gonna roll this to the top, I'm going to take a straight edge and extend these all the way across. The next step will be to measure the circumference of this uh, tank and uh, divide that by four. That will give us quarters. And then I will come down from 12 o'clock one quarter. And I will put a mark all the way around at the one quarter uh, mark. In other words, I'll have four horizontal lines. We will only use two of those lines for the most part. Um, the three o'clock lines on the back, six o'clock lines on the bottom. We will use those occasionally, but, but just a couple of more times throughout the build just to make sure that, that we're right. Use those as double check lines. But the 12 o'clock and the nine o'clock lines are the lines that we're going to use the most. And remember, we're going to come down for our doors two inches off the 12 o'clock. We're going to use the nine o'clock uh, for our, uh, the bottom of our door opening. Now, one thing that I did want to do before I move this out of position, nice thing about being able to roll it back to exactly where we had it, um, 
is to extend this line around the end a little bit. As far as I can see, the laser line is what I want. And that's gonna help me later on put uh, what looks like crosshairs on the ends of the tanks. In other words, my uh, center line going down the very center of the tank and my center line going horizontally uh, across the center of the tank there. Those lines will become very important for us later on, so we wanna make sure that they are exact. And I'm still in the exact position I wanna be, so I'm just going to stretch this line right around. And there we go. And I don't wanna to go too far around. Uh, you know, just getting around that radius there where I can, I can get a, uh, a curved piece of cardboard or something like that. To, to wrap around. And the reason I don't want to go all the way around and trust that line is because I haven't made sure that my machine is exactly the same height as this. It doesn't make any difference if I'm a little higher or a little lower as long as I'm looking at a flat plane here. But when I start wrapping around the corner, if I'm looking up, now I am not drawing completely uh, straight around there, if that makes sense. So caution in wrapping around too far unless you have made darn sure that your machine is exactly the same height off the floor as uh, that line right there. I just go a couple of inches and then I just manually collect, correct, uh, connect those around. So let me go ahead and measure the circumference and uh, we'll get moving to the next step. All right, so I have uh, taped my wife's uh, cloth sewing tape measure here. Uh, hopefully she never watches the videos and uh, uh, finds out that I've been using that for the last couple years. And uh, I'll show you a tip on using those here in a little bit. Uh, I have used, and I still do use, the uh, cardboard rollouts um, or, or whatever, they, whatever those are called. Uh, I just find those a little flimsy um, to keep running straight. Uh, I, I will use them periodically for measuring, but this turns out to be a whole lot easier. Uh, now, if I need to run a vertical line straight, I'll use the, the laser for that or we'll just measure it out. Um, I don't like trusting those things because they can shift just a little bit and then you're off, uh, you know, maybe an eighth or, or even a quarter of an inch if you're not very, very careful. So this is exactly a 95 inch circumference tank on this end. I will do the same thing to that end. Uh, and don't be surprised if your tank circumference is off an eighth or a quarter of an inch or so. Uh, that's not unusual at all. Uh, it's not gonna bother us uh, as long as you know to plan for that ahead of time. These tanks were not made uh, to do what we're doing with them. They're not made to come apart uh, and to have pieces and parts welded inside them. So just a little caution, uh, particularly when you're welding your grate rails in uh, and making your grates, uh, say if uh, you have a, a certain length for your great, your bottom grate rail over here, don't go ahead and cut off four of them uh, thinking that the one that fits this side is gonna fit over there. It, it could be you know, a quarter of a half inch difference. Uh, so these tanks are not uh, completely round uh, and we'll see when we get over there exactly how far off this one is, uh, if it is at all. Uh, I have had some that were exact, but very rarely are they not uh, an eighth or a quarter of an inch difference from one end to the other. And we are 35 and a sixteenth, so uh, I could even write that off to my tape not being exactly tight. A, a sixteenth for 95 inches is, is darn near perfect. As a matter of fact, um, I could probably stretch it to 95. So we're gonna say 95, we're just gonna call that 95 on both sides. So 60 and 35 is 95. And uh, we'll divide that up into fourths and then start making our, our marks across here. So let me get the laser set up to do that. Okay, so uh, 95 inches this tank has, uh, or 95 exactly, this tank has made it easy for us. Having some nice round math and uh, I'll get my tape measure back. And something I wanted to show you about uh, uh, this tape measure while I have it off is some of these tape measures, and I don't know if you can see here, some of them don't start and end at, uh, I don't mind it necessarily not ending 
add, I don't mind having this extra tail before the little metal tab, uh, but it does. it is aggravating that they don't start uh, at exactly zero. I, I don't know why that is for these things. Maybe I'm sure somebody in the comments will tell me that there's a, a perfectly good reason why these um, sewing uh, cloth tapes don't do that. But anyway, it, zero is back here, and then the little metal tab goes out. So all I do is fold the little metal tab over uh, like that, and then it started at exactly zero, and I just put some blue tape at the end so that I could use it. Uh, there's no problem with that as long as you know and don't forget to uh, always start way back here rather than that extra half inch. Uh, it's just years and years and years of using a tape measure that starts at zero. Uh, I have on occasion inadvertently added that extra half inch. So just heads up on these things. They will, uh, will mess you up if you're not paying attention. So easy math on this tape. Divide 95 uh, by 4. Make sure I'm up there on exactly the mark, and that should be 23 and three quarters. So that will put me a mark right here at 23 and three quarters. And I'm gonna put my glasses on to make sure that I am marking the right spot. Yes, that looks good. And I'm gonna go back up double check that uh, I'm in the right spot and I'm exactly where I need to be. And come down and double check it again and I am exactly right. Now, another word of caution. Uh, when you are measuring these tanks, don't measure right here next to the weld. And the reason is uh, these tanks, the, the circumference of this tank is gonna be lower right next to the weld than it will out here. If you look down the tank, you can see that it's kind of squeezed in so that it goes into this joint here. Uh, I like to come off about two inches and then you're back on the nice flat area. So at the end of the tank, it goes in just a little bit into that weld, or at least most of them do. Uh, the ones that I've been seeing in the last few years, all of them do. So uh, don't measure right here at the seam and don't ever trust that that seam is exactly in the same spot all the way around because it, it will throw you off. So there's my 23 and uh, three quarters. I'm gonna do the same thing in this direction. And there we are exactly 47 and a half. So we're good to go there. All right, so this tank is at least up here. Um, between the two, the two welds, it is about 70 and 15 sixteenths, uh, close to 70 and 78. I'm gonna call that 71 because all we're doing is getting a center line right here. So uh, half of 30 of 71 is 35 and a half. And we're gonna put a mark right there for 35 and a half. Now, normally I, I do not measure off the seams, but all we're doing is putting a reference line here. So it doesn't have to be exactly in the center. It can be an eighth or so off, and we're never gonna know it. Um, we just aren't. So I'm going to uh, use that mark as my center mark, uh, center vertical mark on the tank. And everything on this tank will be built off of this line and this line. Uh, even our door measurements are going to come off of this line. I'm not going to use the welds because they may not be straight, right? But we're going to know that we make this line exactly straight, and we'll do that now. So the way that I will do that is um, stand back and look, and I, I usually use this crack that I have on my floor. Uh, it's actually the seam and the concrete the expansion joint in the concrete. And I'll kind of line that up. It's not rocket science, you don't have to be exactly right, but what I'm getting at is you want this machine pretty much uh, in front of your center mark there. So uh, let's turn this on and we're gonna point it right at the machine there and that looks pretty darn straight. That's coming right off the 90 degree point off the machine and Holy smokes, we're pretty darn close. Uh, that's close enough that I don't want to uh, screw up the uh, level on the machine by moving it at all. 
So what we're going to do is uh, just ease this over if I can, right there. And we're going to draw that line straight on down. Come back to it, make sure that we stayed on it, yes. Now, word of caution here, your rotisserie needs to be right. Uh, if your wheels are not in exactly the right spot, uh, or if, you're, um, if your wheels are not in exactly the right spot, or, or if they're not straight, your tank, as you roll it, may roll one way or the other on this rotisserie. So if you do two or three rolls, you may not be on that center line anymore. So uh, my tank is right, or my rotisserie is right. Uh, I've gone to uh, great lengths to make sure that it is. Uh, but still, what we're going to do is uh, mark this in a couple of spots. All right, so I like to use uh, the door band material that I've rolled to the exact radius uh, as a straight edge because it works great. Uh, it doesn't flex like those uh, cardboard flex rolls. Uh, it's not going to move on me. So I'll line it up on uh, just a few of these marks and I know that I have a good straight line. And we'll carry that straight on down. And that's our, our uh, nine o'clock line right there. I need to extend it out. Uh, if you if you haven't seen the uh, uh, video on, on rolling these, I do have a, a roller, a shop built roller design on the Mystic Smoker website. It's free. You can just go look at the design and build your own. I built mine in an afternoon out of uh, scrap material to uh, roll these door bands to the exact radius for your tank. This is two inch flat bar, it's quarter inch th thick, so uh, it, it rolls them very easy. Just watch that video and you can see how to do that. Um, nothing to it. Okay, so back to uh, back to our layout. So here is our uh, 12 o'clock, our 9 o'clock, our door is going to be in here. We know that we want to come down two inches off of the 12 o'clock. Which is going to put us So we have the top of our door, the bottom of our door, and now we need to work on the sides. I like to put a four inch post in the middle. Uh, a lot of guys would like to do three inch posts. I've seen two and in, in even a little less than two in some cases, but I like four. Uh, I'm not worried about decreasing my door size that much. I like having that stability of the nice four inch post going to, right down the middle. So. Uh, four inch mark here, two on one side and two on the other. And grab my straight edge, of course, and just connect those little dots up. And I like to come two inches off of the door seam. So two inches off the door seam puts us about there. And again, it's not rocket science. You can come in a little more if you want. I don't like to get any closer than two inches because uh, like I said, the, the metal is not uh, stable here. It, it's actually rolled down just a little bit on this tank. So I'm nice and flat up there. I'm a good wood distance from that weld. So I feel comfortable with coming off two inches. And we're going to see what two inches is 
out to here, it's 31 and a quarter. So I tell you what, I'm gonna pull it back to 31 and we're just gonna be two and a quarter inches off of this wall. And see what this one does. Go to 31. And that should pull us exactly two and a quarter inches off of this wall, and it does. Uh, it, there's nothing worse than building a system out and standing back and then scratching your head and go, you know what, that door looks a little more narrow than that door over there, or, or this, this edge, this seam here, uh, looks to be just a little more narrow. You pull a tape measure out and darn if you're not out a quarter of an inch or something like that. So constantly be double checking and triple checking all of your measurements from different points just to make sure that you have done it right. And there's that one. So there's our two doors. I kind of like that setup. It's gonna sit about like that right there. So our bungholes are way back out of the way. They'll be patched and repaired, sanded and ground, ground and sanded. So you won't see those. Um, you know, any evidence of those is gonna be underneath our uh, table. Of course, they'll be cut off and ground smooth. So I think that's gonna work good. Collector's gonna go here. We'll use this line that wraps around, joined to the one in the back. That'll be the center line of our collector. And in this case, I'm going to run the collector center on great line. Uh, I have done it where I've run them an inch or so down or an inch or so up. Uh, that just complicates things. This one uh, is going to be in the center. I really don't see any significant difference. Uh, certainly not enough to warrant the extra work in either adding one lower or a little bit higher. And you may be asking, you know, what's the difference? Uh, well, the difference is your bottom plate, if you run it in the center, your bottom plate on top and your bottom plate on the bottom are exactly the same. If you run it higher, uh, you've got two different sizes, two different shapes of uh, plate, and the side plates have to be uh, massaged a little bit to, uh, to manage that. So it is so much easier, uh, just a tip for future builds, to uh, run that exhaust, or exhaust collector right in the center. Uh, I like to use blue tape because it makes the line stand out better when I'm cutting this line with a saw. Uh, I will use the uh, cold cut saw uh, carbide blade to uh, cut these lines out. Uh, it, it doesn't induce any heat at all into the tank. I don't like using a plasma anymore. I, I've done that many times in the past and you run the risk of um, putting enough heat in the door that you will actually warp that panel and uh, make it where your door doesn't fit exactly right. I usually start my plunge cut for my cold cut saw with the, uh, the 16th inch uh, cutting wheel on the, the angle grinder and then it just makes it, makes it easier on the saw blade. The actual plunge with the uh, saw is um, by far the most dangerous part of that cut. Uh, and it is the hardest on the carbide tip. So I'll um, probably do about a six inch cut with the grinder here, six inch there, six inch there, six inch there, uh, and, and probably even do one on the, the, these cuts here, just because it does make my blades last so much longer. All right, so there's our door layout, um, and I like that, I like those doors. We'll double check the size on them. Uh, just to make sure, this is the actual opening. So 31, 31, exactly. And 31, and uh, 31. So we're good to go. So I like that layout. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get set up to do the cuts, to uh, cut the doors, and we'll move on from there to uh, lay out the stack, depending on how the, uh, the doors end up looking. Uh, I will cut all but the very corners. I'll run the saw here, run the saw there, and leave that very, very corner intact all the way around. And if this tank has any stresses in it that I don't know about, of course, we've done everything that we can do so far to avoid 
stresses that we know of in the tank, but you, you just never really know. Uh, I'd say probably, I don't know, two or three percent of the tanks that I cut open uh, will have some sort of stress that you, you just can't avoid. Even though you use a nice cold cut saw, uh, we're not inducing the stress that way. We're staying away from the high stress areas. Uh, maybe two to five percent of the tanks um, will have a stress issue and even though you leave the corners nibbed in you'll start to see one of these panels start to come out a little bit. Uh, we're hoping that that one doesn't do this. Uh, if it does then I, I will likely scrap the tank. Uh, I'm not, um, I, I just don't have the tank, I've got, I don't have the time, I've got several tanks. Uh, I'll either give it away or, or sell it for scrap or whatever. Uh, I don't have the time to be fixing a door. There are a lot of guys out there that use turnbuckles and you know welding in there and I have repaired tanks like that but uh, in all honesty you'll, you'll spend a day maybe even more uh, trying to get it right in, in actuality. Uh, you'll, you'll probably never get it to be right and even then you'll have to, to weld some cross bracing in here on the back of the door to uh, get it to stay that way. And also keep in mind that it's not just the case that we're talking about uh, where the tank, the, the, the large piece of sheet metal that it's rolled out of has some stress in it. Uh, if it does pop open in one of these areas, even though the corner is there, you'll see it just won't feel flat right there uh, across the, the saw curve or the, the saw opening. Uh, if that does happen, keep in mind that it's not just the door, it's the entire tank, the entire piece of sheet metal that uh, has some sort of stress in it that is relieving when you cut that seam. If that's the case, uh, it's not just your door, it's the rest of the tank, so you can brace the door up, but you know, the tank's out around as well, so you need to do something to uh, pull the tank back in and then, and then put a cross member in there to hold it, you know, weld it in place. Uh, it gets just, just gets to be too, many, too much trouble out there and uh, you know, 95 tanks out of 100 won't do it if we, if we cut it right. And in my opinion, those uh, five out of 100 tanks just aren't worth the effort to, uh, to try to, to make work right, at least for my purposes. So I'll go ahead and uh, get started cutting these. I think this is a real good spot to end this video. My original intention was to carry it through uh, installing the door bands, but uh, I think that's going to be a little longer process than I originally thought. So we're right at 38 minutes now. So this end this episode here and uh, open the next episode with uh, actually cutting the doors and putting the door band material. Mm -hmm.